So welcome to the Smarter Lock install video. We're going to take you through how to configure up your locker bank from scratch in about three minutes. If you can slam locker doors and tap next, the system pretty much does all the rest. We start with an unconfigured locker bank. Just tap yes to start and enter the uh, admin pin. It's one, two, three, four by default. The controller will have detected the number of connected lockers and in this case it's seven. In your case it's probably more. And the number, if the number is more or less than you expect, then tap the red button where some troubleshooting steps will help you resolve the probable cabling issue. Next, you're going to be asked if all the lockers are the same type. In this case, we've got some different size lockers, so we're going to choose large lockers and small lockers. This information is going to be used later for allocating users different types of lockers. Important users get big lockers, that type of thing. The system needs to map which is which. So first, it'll open all the doors and then ask you to shut the large locker doors and uh, the screen updates as each door is closed. Next we'll create the small locker type and shut all of these doors. Uh, so we'll shut those. One, two, three, four. And after this, the system's going to ask, uh, it's going to double check it's got everything right. It'll ask you to confirm whether it opens first all the large doors and uh, then the small doors. The next step is mapping the locker numbers to the doors. The system's very flexible with numbering schemes. It lets you choose numbers or a prefix with a number or a number with a suffix following. And if none of those numbering schemes are going to work, then tap that red button and you can name each locker individually. In our case, we're going to go with a prefix, and these lockers are on level 2, so we'll call them L2 dot something. The system suggests L2 dot 1 through 7, but in our case, we've already got a small bank that's using numbers 1 to 4, so we'll start with L2 dot 5, which will take our lockers through to locker L2 dot 11. The next step then asks to shut the locker doors in order so it can map the locker numbers to the door and then save it. If you make a mistake at any point, you can just tap the red button to open the locker doors again and repeat the process. So now that the uh, lockers have all been assigned a locker type and number, the final part of the setup lets us add some information about where the locker bank is located. This information is used by the Smarter Lock app to identify which locker bank they are standing in front of which is especially useful if there are multiple banks nearby. Also, we can add in some other helpful information to the user like alternative locations. If this locker bank is full, for example, you can specify the name of the closest alternative bank for them to go to. So uh, tap next here and you're done. The system is going to close out the locker configuration screen and return to the kiosk mode. From here you can double tap the screen and uh, get into the admin interface again using the PIN code. You can see here the other general settings that can be configured if you don't like the default settings or uh, perform operational tasks like opening the locker doors for users that have lost access for some reason or do permanent mappings of lockers to users. So that's the basic setup complete. There's other videos available that go through the uh, admin interface in more detail for a uh, day-to-day operation. Those videos will cover how to create fixed reservations when staff come and go, perform hardware tests, replace a failed locker if such a thing happens, and touch on the uh, analytics module. Check those videos out at smarterlock.com and uh, thanks for watching.